uh, the very first trade paperback I ever did for Strangers in Paradise had this cover illustration of Francine. It was supposed to look like this is a black paper cover and you tore a uh, strip off the middle to reveal Francine. And she has a uh, bruise there that symbolizes her relationship and her love life and her life in general. Uh, she's gone through one bad boyfriend after another. And then she reconnects with her best friend from high school, Kachu. And it's a long road, but the healing process begins with Kachu. So I've never done a, a Kachu version of the same cover. I, want, I always wanted to so that there was kind of a paired. So that I did. I've drawn, I've penciled one up. And I thought maybe today we could just ink it. You can see that um, it's not a complicated drawing. It just has to be correct. So um, I kind of drew, of course, in order to visualize all these proportions, I drew past all this. And here's what's really going on behind the cover and all that. Like that. And then you have to know where the top of the forehead is. It's up and right about there. And the hair's coming down like this. So I drew outside the lines, but that's going to be erased. And it's really important to know where this stuff is so that the stuff that shows is right. Brush time uh, using my Raphael number one. And I'm dipping it into that ink ball over there. I showed you all about my ink ball last week. And over just to the side on the right here is my little scrap piece of paper that I am wiping and rolling and getting the point back on the brush every time like that. You can't just dip it and go. Um, that's how you get a super fat brush. That's how you paint a wall. Not a face. I don't think I can talk and ink at the same time, guys. Because this is like surgery. So if you're in surgery and your surgeon is just chatting away while he's working, you need to be worried about the work he's doing. I'm full of bad advice. Now I'm thinking about the colorist. When I'm making these lines, I'm thinking about dynamic lines for the colorist. And I only use two colorists my whole, almost my entire career. I use uh, Brian Miller of Hi-Fi Color Design and Steve Hamaker. And both guys are just brilliant. And they really know my inking and my style. Um, it's, and I, I have found over the years I need both guys because there may be times where one of them has a big project. Or, God forbid, they have a life and they went on vacation. I know, hard to imagine. So, but between the two guys, we managed to get through the last couple of decades and make some books. Thank you guys. When I do eyebrows, I always go in this direction so that it looks, I, I think that's how eyebrows grow. And then if you look at Brushed eyebrow. Well, not right now, everybody's the, the fat is that eyebrows are uh, super painted and you can't see the the hair. It just looks like it's all painted on a solid line. But before that, there was a more natural stage, and that's kind of the one that set Kachu's eyebrows, where they looked. You could see the eyebrow it was brushed. In that sense, I've done the um, old person thing of pick your favorite style or decade and stay there. <laughs> I kind of did that with that detail on Kachu. She's not going to the 
flat painted eyebrow look, I guarantee you. Need more ink? Roll it. Okay. When you're this close, um, symmetry and alignment really matter. And um, you're also tempted to put in a lot of details. Like you'd be so tempted to do in real life, this bottom eyelid, you would see the inside line. And then you would see the edge because it's... That's about a centimeter thick, that eyelid. And then on this side, this side here is where the hair would be, right? So in a photograph, you would see that. We're not going to do that. <laughs> That's too much detail for my style. And just because you don't put details like that in there doesn't mean you don't know they're there. But those are the choices you make as a cartoonist. What lines can I get rid of that are not super critical? So you can just do this one bold line there. I'm going to come back on this. This little be the rest of those lashes. If I want to touch them up, I'll use that tiny little 005 point to do that. There's only so small that this guy will get when it's loaded with ink. Same for this stuff in here. I'll do the main line. Like that. But there's a smaller line here and here and here. Maybe I can do that one. And there, I'm going to leave those for the pen. So I'm just doing bolder lines right now. Trying really hard not to shake this table with your camera. That tapping is, uh, they're building a fence across the street. I think that's what it is. It may be a UFO has landed and he's knocking on the front door. I'll look out the window and see a UFO in the yard. Okay, that's super bad. But I'm going to get in there with the pen and fix it so that it doesn't look like... Uh, some funky design. There, fixed it. <laughs> fixed it. Even though that's blonde hair, you would think, well, we just need to use a thin line and do the rest with color. On a pen and ink illustration, having a bolder line right there really seems to matter. If every line on here was thin, um, it's a different style, but it also, you really would depend on having your colorist finish the painting for you. And at that point, the artist needs to be the colorist. Okay, not too many of these things. I'll, I'll screw it up. I already see some that I'm going to get rid of. That's too busy. See, those little lines that I insinuated in there... Um, I'm going to come back with the pen for those. Okay, the paper. I tipped the wrong. I have one that's kind of gray and one that's kind of black over here in the inkwell, and I dipped my brush in the gray one. There's the black one. Okay. These are all the lines that need to go from thin to fat. Let me show you what I'm doing here. 
I'm going to try to get the brush point down to a tiny, tiny little tiny, tiny. You have to get almost all the ink off of it. Better. <clears throat> Feels like we're wasting ink, doesn't it? It's so important, though, to get the brush right. Better. Okay, why did I do that? For this. I'm barely touching the paper. I'm really just floating on it. I mean, my hand is just hovering over it. Well, my hand is resting on the board, but the brush is floating. If you do this right, you can actually get this brush to be thinner than that 0.05. can't talk right now. If I talk right now, I'll mess up your surgery. See this uh, shade line I put underneath the eyelid that goes over the top of the pupil? That's learned from the old guys. Okay, I'm going to switch to the 05. Okay, shall we see what we have? Okay, here's what I have so far. You know what it's time for? Time for my best friend, Whiteout. There's things below, things on top, multi-layer, and that's what the, the darker areas imply that it's further back in the in the mix. See how the fingers see how the fingers match? And then you go the ones in the back go a little darker. So when you're doing that with hair, you know, it makes it look like 3D. There's some hair below and some hair on top. Okay, I'm done. Um, I don't know where to sign this. Should I sign at the bottom of the 11 by 17 page? Or should I sign? I'm going to sign up here. Um, because what's going to happen is in, in the book, this is black and that's black. Like that. So what I'll do is for the art, I'll sign it here, of course. And then on the book, that'll just be covered up. I'm at the three. Okay. I now have a Kachu Strangers in Paradise uh, torn paper cover. Um, we just did a cover together. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, it went pretty quick, didn't it? So the colors will fix all my mistakes and make it look pretty 
and I'll be ready to move on to the next one. Okay, guys, have a good week.